just tell us a little bit about uh, your uh, your level of excitement and this opportunity you've got now. Now, I don't think words can be, you know, put into play of how I feel about this opportunity. You know, you guys will know how I feel about Coach Staley. Me and his relationship go way back. I'm just thankful, you know, for the organization, you know, the Spanos family, Tom, you know, Brandon, you know, believing in me and giving me this opportunity to lead the defensive unit this year in 2023 and beyond. And can you take us through just sort of the timeline, how this went uh, went down from your end? Well, like you guys know, I mean, things go fast in the NFL. You know, if things happen and you got to be ready to adjust on the fly. You know, Coach, Coach Hill had the opportunity to go to Miami um, the next couple of days, and you know, things worked out where, you know, I got an opportunity to, to get involved in the job, and, you know, Coach Taylor believed in me uh, after we interviewed a couple guys, and, you know, the rest is history. And then just uh, from your perspective of things, I mean, having watched the defense the last couple of seasons, what, what needs to happen here uh, going into next year? I'm, I'm sure Coach Staley, uh, the defense probably hasn't been quite up to the standards that he had hoped. What, what do you think needs to happen, uh, you know, this offseason and going into next season to, to maybe get things closer to what maybe his expectations are? You know, Jeff, we're not going to look, you know, look in the past. You know, we're going to keep our lens moving forward. You know, obviously the first two years, you know, we have some growing pains. We, we did some good things as well. You know, so in 2023, we're going to focus on, you know, all 11 guys playing as one, you know, just as we have the first two years and, you know, put guys in position to make plays and, you know, coach guys hard, you know, play to our standard, our way, you know, get the result that we need. All right. Thank you. Let's go to Daniel Popper. Go ahead, Daniel. Hey, Derek. Congratulations. Thanks, Dan. So I'm just curious, what's sort of your vision for this role? What do you think? you know, you'll, you'll be doing as, as defensive coordinator, how much will change from what Ronaldo was doing? How much will you, you know, sort of you bring a new, a new perspective, just your sort of overall vision for, for yourself in this role. Well, the first thing is to be an extension of coach Staley, you know, be a support staff for him, um, making sure that, you know, whatever he needs on a day-to-day -day basis, a weekly basis, game day and post game day, you know, to make sure he can do his job at a high level and be another set of eyes, you know, to support him, you know, to his vision, to the defense and, through the way we see it and, you know, just be a extra set of hands and, you know, and also coach our guys like we've been doing, you know, nothing would change in the identification, you know, factor of the players and, you know, coaching them and developing them, you know, like we've been for the first two years. And I don't know if you saw, but um, Derwin gave you a congratulations on Twitter. What did it mean to get that, that type of support from, from the guy that's been sort of the leader of your defense these last two years? Well, you know, he definitely is the leader, you know, he's the heart, heart pulse of our, our um, you know, defense or secondary even our team, you know, he's kind of the, the, the mentality that walks around the building, always in an upbeat spirit. And for him to sign off on that, you know, just, you know, a testament to our relationship. You know, we've had, we have a great relationship from day one. Um, I've known him for a while in college. Um, he's been the same guy every single day. So, you know, that, that brought some excitement to me, you know, seeing him do that. And just, just last one for me, um, Tommy Donatel got an elevation as well into uh, the role you previously had. Just how excited are you for, for him to take on, that bigger role here with your defensive staff well deserved well deserved you know tommy sharp you know he's a, he's a guy who's errors on the uprise um he's very professional he's very knowledgeable in the back end and the front um so this promotion was was warranted you know we all know what we have in him organization knows what he has in him and it's it's awesome to see a guy you know work his way up through the organization and get an opportunity um, to be successful awesome thank you lindsay Hi, Derek. Um, this question might not actually be that answerable because you haven't actually gone through a season as a NFL DC, but what do you think is probably the biggest difference between like being a college defensive coordinator and then taking that jump to being an NFL defensive coordinator? Well, I don't think it's a huge difference. You know, you know, playing football is all about relationships, you know, player to coach, coach to player, you know, and, and players just want you to be real with them, you know, matter, no matter if that's the college level, you know, or the pro game, you know, give them the information that they need to be successful. And then those things will, you know, continue to be, you know, as we move forward here. Um, I guess to answer your question, the biggest difference is there's no class in the NFL. There's no school. It's all football. Mm -hmm. uh, and then just with you obviously being with the team prior to being elevated to D.C., um, how much does that kind of jump on the relationships even outside, you know, the secondary, outside those position groups help you, like with Joey or Khalil or any of those kind of guys? Well, I think those those things have been a work in progress the first two years. You know, that's one thing Coach Staley preaches, that he wants coaches to touch the whole team. You know, defensive coaches touch, you know, the offense and vice versa. You know, special teams, you know, we coach, as, as position coaches, we coach special teams as well with Coach Fick in, in, in some, some aspects of our roles. 
You know, so those things won't change. You know, I have relationships with all those guys. If anything, they'll intensify, you know, moving forward. Thank you. Fernando. Hey, Derek, uh, through your coaching career, what's the best advice that you've received uh, from your stops? I mean, it could be from Alabama, Tennessee, the Raiders. What, 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 what do you feel like is the best advice you've ever gotten? Um, I would say Coach Saban when I was a GA in 2011. Um, I had the opportunity to get my first full-time job at UCF, um, and that, that job came pretty quickly. And as I got on that job, there was another job that presented itself, you know, going to Tennessee. And Coach Saban just gave me the advice is, you know, in, in the coaching profession as young coaches, you know, make sure you make the best decision professionally. And, you know, young coaches don't need to be looking for jobs uh, very quickly. And uh, last one for me, what do you feel like you've learned uh, these last few years under the chart, being with the Chargers from 2001 and now? What, do you, what have you kind of learned about uh, maybe about yourself, about the game or about um, about uh, the players on the team? Well, the biggest thing that you learn in the NFL is, you know, this game is about, you know, relationships. It's about partnerships, about give and take. Um, it's about seeking input and giving input. Um, that's from player to coach and coach to player. Um, you know, no coach has all the answers. You know, the players are the ones that are seeing it through their helmet on the grass. You know, and I, I think that's big for a coach, especially at this level, you know, to have some flexibility to listen to the players because the players sometimes know best.